I'm Ted Berg for SNY.TV, and today's Know Your Enemy segment looks at the Giants. We're coming to City Field for a four-game set. Skyping into the studio is Grant Brisby from the Giants blog, McCoveyChronicles.com. Grant, how are you? Doing well. How are you doing? Pretty good. Uh, we like to start out with a, with a good thing for the Giants, and I'd say early in the season, uh, one of the big positive stories for them has to be the return and success of Buster Posey. Yeah, it, it was hard to to imagine exactly how attached we were to the guy after uh, a few months without him. But when he's back in the lineup, he makes the lineup better. He's a nice calming influence on the pitchers, on, on the fans. He makes me stop freaking out. Um, so it, it's been a huge thing having him back. And he, he's been hitting pretty well. And on the other side of the coin, you talk about Posey, a young player contributing. Uh, they have a young player who really hasn't gotten much of a chance to contribute in, in Brandon Belt, a guy who, who tore up the minor leagues, and then it seems like the team is, is reluctant to play regularly. Yeah, I mean, I, I can understand the argument for Huff in a way. If you look at his career averages, they are you know, pretty decent. And you can't just assume that a guy's going to come up from the minor leagues and and perform that well, uh, but they're just not playing him at all. I mean, they're they're p putting him in the third inning of a game and then pulling him out in the double switch in the fifth inning. Um, so it's been really kind of curious how they've gone to such extremes to not play him. And, and you know, the guy doesn't seem to have that much more to prove in the minors, but you you would rather have your prospects playing every day somewhere, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, okay, so you you're gonna prefer Huff. You're gonna think that he's a better bet to win this season. I get it. Um, but then put Brandon Belt in the minors where he can play every day, see the pitching. If they think that he's got a hole in his swing, let him work on that hole. Let him manage it and, and see how he does against pitching. I want to get to the pitchers in this series. Barry Zito, tonight's starter, off to a great start. Is he doing something different, or is he just getting a little bit lucky? He has better command. He's not walking guys. He's hitting his spots in the strike zone. I don't know if that's going to stick. I don't know if that's just a kind of a fluke through a couple of starts. It's always been when his velocity went down. If he could hit his spots, if he could throw strikes, uh, you know, he'd be great. We always said that. But that's kind of like saying, well, you know, if my Corolla had jets, it would be a, you know, a flying Corolla. Um, that, that's probably not very likely. But hey, if he can throw strikes, that, that's fantastic. And we always said the same thing about Oliver Perez. Obviously, a more, more extreme case. Uh, tomorrow's starter, Ryan Vogelsong, one of the great stories of last year's season. It just ha had an, a tremendous year after playing overseas, after really not having pitched in the majors for years. Is, is that something you expect to continue? Because it looked like in his first start, he sort of picked up where he left off. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to expect him to, to finish in the top 10 at ERA again. Uh, but I think the way he pitched last year, he seemed like he'd be a perfectly capable third starter, fourth starter, kind of like a, a Jeff Supan or, or, or uh, Jason Marquis in his prime, someone like that. I think he, he has a limited upside. I don't think he'll be as good as last year. But I think he's a, a very worthwhile addition to, to most rotations. And then Tim Linscombe is going Sunday off to a terrible start. Is he just done? Are, are we saying he's done now? Yeah, he, he, Giants are probably working up the release papers as we speak. He's a... Uh, I, he, you know, he's he's getting the swings and misses. It's it's his breaking stuff's looking good. He's just not commanding it. He's leaving a lot of stuff up in the zone. Uh, yeah. He's hitting to a little bit of poor luck. I think it's you're noticing this a lot more because it's the first uh, few starts of the season. If it were kind of buried in the middle, it would be described more as a rough patch other than a, a broken Tim Lincecum. But I, I think he's fine. Yeah, in, in all seriousness, he's had rough stretches like this a few times before. Yeah, I remember in August 2010, that was the first really bad rough stretch. And I remember actually I was at a Pirates-Giants uh, game in, in August, and, and he just got roped around. And I remember thinking, well, you know, that, that's it. I guess, you know, it was good while it lasted. A couple of Cy Youngs, that's, that's more than you can expect out of most of your prospects. Uh, but uh, he, he turned it around just fine after that. And in the bullpen, Brian Wilson, uh, the bad news is, is going to be out. Uh, what are they doing in his absence? Uh, they're going to go with... Santiago Casilla. Uh, they were going to do a bullpen by committee thing, uh, but the best reliever, Sergio Romo, 
uh, has little tender elbow issues sort of thing. Uh, so they don't want to push him, do back-to-back -back nights, do the multiple inning thing, which they like to do with closers sometimes. So it's it's pretty much going to be Casilla. And he, he throws hard. He, he plays the part well. He filled in a little bit last year and did pretty well. Grant, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you, Ted. Remember, for all the latest Mets coverage, be sure to check in at MetsBlog.com, TedQuarters.net, and SNY.TV.